Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's blessing again. Have you missed me? Because I have actually missed you. And I know that it's been a while since we sat and we talked. Or since we sat at all. Because I haven't part of a video at all in December. But guys, a lot has been happening with me. And so I'm going to be catching you up in this video. But before I start, if you haven't subscribed... <laughs> If you haven't subscribed, I actually don't know what you're doing. I don't know. I don't understand because big, big 2020s around the corner and you're still watching us without commitment. Like, is that what we're doing in 2020? Stop it. So, guys, we finally hit 20,000 subscribers. I actually, I don't have words. Words fail me. Thank you all so much for 20,000. If you told me in 2017 when I had like 700 subscribers that I would have 20,000 in just under two years, I would have told you like, you're mad. <laughs> but at the same time, if you told me I would have the same amount of views at 20,000 as I was having at 700, I would still tell you you're mad. So realistically, <laughs> but no, honestly, thank you so much, guys. And I really just want to know what it is that you want to see on the channel. Why did you subscribe? So comment down below. What is your reason for subscribing? Why did you subscribe to Diamante Box? I know that a lot of my um, viewers are for Yoruba channel, but I want to know what 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 type of content exactly do you want to see? Then in 2020, I want to start again. I want to restructure the channel. I want to. Um, review the channel and the channel's direction so please let me know what kind of content exactly do you want to see do you want to see more Yoruba lessons like actual lesson lessons do you want to see more straight talking videos where I just talk in Yoruba and translate it do you want to see more videos with other people with guests do you want to see more Nigerian culture videos so more like outfits clothes um, music movies what do you want to see and do you want to see more videos about me more talking videos more personal videos let, let me know why you subscribe to this channel and let me know what you want to see on this channel because 2020 i'm about to take this very very seriously there's no time to play okay but thank you so much for 20,000. that is mind-blowing please keep on supporting if you're not subscribed please subscribe anytime you watch a video and you like it give it a thumbs up comment down below when you comment you're giving me engagement but if you want to support me then please just share my my channel share my videos if you really want to support me watch all the ads to the end because that's how i get paid <laughs> um but yeah like i'm just glad that you're here we're a family we're not going anywhere so thank you so much for 20,000 keep liking sharing subscribing and just watching the videos guys what would truly make me happy is if the views on the videos actually reflected how many subscribers that we have but either way whether you watch or you don't watch you share or you don't share I'm grateful thank you for being here but I'm going to be giving you a, a video every three to four days until this year runs out so I will be bombarding you with videos. If you are not ready, go and get ready. I know it's the holiday period, but you know, you can watch it with your family, you can watch it in your free time whilst you're traveling, whatever, regardless. So every three to four days, you will be getting a video from me. I'm gonna try and make it as varied and entertaining as I can. So that's my gift for you for Christmas, okay? Okay, so that's that. If you follow me on Instagram, then you will know actually that I I'm a barrister now. Well, I'm a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Okay. So I'm done with law school. If you don't know, if you're new to the channel, I traveled to the, I moved well, I moved slash traveled to Nigeria in 2018, June 2018. And my initial purpose in Nigeria at that time was to do law school and become qualified in Nigeria. And a year and a half later, <laughs> a year and a half later, your girl is a barrister, as in. Um, and so I am back in the UK now. And at this point in time, I am back in the UK permanently. I don't have any immediate plans to go back to Nigeria to live but i am considering doing nysc which is the national youth service corp corporal corpa 
corporate. Anyway, <laughs> it's the National Youth Service. And if you don't know, it's, it's a thing in Nigeria where it lasts for a year. The first three weeks you go to camp. It's kind of like a boot camp. You wake up at 4.30 in the morning. You do exercises. You sing army songs. You sing the national anthem. That kind of vibe. Um, and you just meet new people. And you can get posted to any state in Nigeria. And then the rest of the year, after the three weeks, you get posted to a place of work and you're supposed to serve your nation, serve your country for that year. So you have to do that if you want to work in Nigeria. And so even though I'm qualified, I won't be able to like practice as a lawyer unless I do this NYSC. So I'm considering doing it and I was going to do it right after law school, but I was just like, oh my God, I've spent a year in Nigeria already and I just... I had it up to here. <laughs> I couldn't do it anymore. So I was just like, no, I need to go back to London and then like recuperate, breathe, relax, make some money, save up and then come back to Nigeria and do it. But I, if I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't even know if I'm going to end up going back. Okay. Because there's just, there's just something about organization. There's something about having light all the time. There's something about having like hot, and cold water coming out of my taps. There's something about being able to just go outside and get on a bus and go anywhere I want to go. There's something about being able to drive my car and know that no one's gonna bash me today. And it's just, the sanity that comes from being here is really hard to give up for a year in Nigeria. And in NYSC, like you're getting paid peanuts. The government's gonna pay you peanuts. The, the firm you're working for is gonna pay you peanuts and they're gonna work you to the bone. And even though I got a first class, yes, your girl got a first class. I still will not be able to really sustain myself on what they're paying me. Like in terms of accommodation and transport, it's a lot. If I want to do NYSC, I want to do it in Lagos. So if I'm going to be living, if I'm going to be living in Lagos, I'm going to need a lot more than what NYSC and my firm will be paying me. So I'm considering maybe working here for a year, saving that money, then going over there and doing it so I can be at least somewhat comfortable. But honestly, I don't know. I don't know. That's all up in the air right now. I don't know where that's going to go. Like there are just certain reasons why I'm just like I don't think. I don't, there's just, uh, listen, when I was in Nigeria, there was just certain things that blew my mind. For example, like, when we were doing our whole call to bar ceremony situation, my friend was staying in a hotel, and we went out for dinner, like, the whole, like, there was a group of us who went out for dinner, and I was going to go back to her place, because, like, my, where I, where my auntie lives is far from where we had, blah, blah, blah. So I was supposed to stay with my friend that night. So when we entered the hotel, they were kind of, being a bit weird towards her they were like to her like is she staying they were talking about me like am i staying the night and she was like she doesn't know she'll see and the man was just being very weird and he was just kind of like trying to get her to say whether i was staying or not but we then went up to the room so we get settled and there's a knock on our door and he's like oh well, we heard your friend is staying the night and she was like, yes, yeah, so what's the problem? I've paid for the room. And when I was paying for the room, you told me the room can take up to three people because it was a large bed. So what's the problem? And he was like, oh, we don't allow same-sex um, people to stay in the same room. Like, two women can't share a room and two men can't share a room. And she's like, what do you mean? And they're like, yeah, it's our policy. Um, you can't share a room with the same sex. So she was like, if I came with a man, that would be okay. He was like, yeah. And we're like, that's the stupidest thing I have ever heard in my life. One, what if she's my sister? What if I'm with my mom? What if, like, why would I not be able to book a room with my friend? Because we're both stupidity. He now said, oh, like, you will have to pay 5,000 extra if she wants her to stay. And my friend is like, she's not paying five, she doesn't have five thousand, so what, what, what's going to happen? And then he was like, oh well, just bring anything you have. Because is it, is it you want to grab money, or you have a policy that says you can't share? It's just, it's just little things like that that happened over the course of my stay there. That just makes you think, I don't need this. Like, I actually don't need, need this. And I understand that I'm privileged in the sense that I can just hop on a plane and come back here. But... There was so many, like, I'm going to be very honest, like, I, I loved my time in Nigeria, honestly, hands down the best decision I ever made. I think going to Nigeria, like, I came away with so many friends, so many lovely experiences, I got to reconnect with my, with my place of origin. I didn't really know 
what Nigeria was like. So I really, really loved getting to know Nigeria and just, I adapted very quickly. I still had an English accent, but I think personally that my Nigerian accent came out more. My friends disagreed, but I think when I was going to shop and just being able to flow, like I loved the experience as a whole, but there were so many times where I was just like, I don't need this. Like it's, it's the most frustrating thing to be a Nigerian living in Nigeria. And I just, I, I really doubt if I could go and live there permanently as in from January to, to December, just because it's just, I'm just gonna get frustrated. Like I will actually pull out my hair because there are so many things that I'm just like, there is no need. Like we don't have to do this. They just drag you through hell. Like my whole call to bar um, process was the most frustrating thing I have ever done in my life. It was so like, I would have logged it if I wasn't so lazy. Like I would have logged it and you guys would have seen like, it was, it was torturous. Just, just being in a place and being like, this could honestly be 10 times faster if you literally just did one small thing differently. Like everything you have to go the long way, everything you have to suffer for. And I just, and it's not even because you need to suffer for it, it's because they just make you suffer for it. And I just didn't want that. It just, I don't know. And I'm going to be really honest with you. When people are like, oh, like people should come back to Nigeria and change Nigeria. I don't think Nigeria wants to change because the people that are making you suffer are Nigerians. Like, I, I don't think Nigeria is ready for change. I don't think Nigeria wants to change. Which is fair enough, if you're happy with the way that things are, that's fine, but I think Nigeria is a place that I would enjoy to stick. I would enjoy living in and doing business in from like, I don't know, five months of the year, six months at stretch. But in terms of living there fully, <sighs> I give up. I love Nigeria. Like, I actually do. I enjoyed the experience. I think it was a great experience. I think it was an experience that's much needed. Honestly, I would I would suggest if if you were born in that diaspora or if you've lived here for the vast majority of your life and you've never experienced not just even not just even Christmas in Nigeria, but like actually living there for a few months and just seeing what day-to-day -day life is when there's no Christmas fanfare, then I would if you have an opportunity to do that, I would definitely suggest that you do that. Or even if you just want to go back for NYSC for a year and just feel what your country is like, I 100% would recommend it. But in terms of do I want to go there and live? Because like, I actually deep it, like doing Yoruba lessons alone, I make more money than almost all graduate level jobs. Like, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You get paid like a, like it's just, you want to make a video about Nigeria, I will do that separately. And I know a lot of Nigerians will come for me and they'll insult me. And that's okay. Like, that's fine. Like, I'm Nigerian myself. I'm not saying this to put down the country. And I'm not saying this to be um, kind of righteous and saying, oh, like, look at this rubbish. Country. That's not what I'm doing. But I think the first step to fixing something is being honest with ourselves. And the amount of time that I was just frustrated out of my mind for no good reason. Like, it's different if I had to be frustrated. But... Like, things that are just small administrative issues get blown up into something that takes five days to fix. Like, something that would happen here and would be fixed in 30 minutes. And not because, um, not because of the facilities that they don't have in Nigeria, but just because here there's a policy that says it's just a small administrative issue, just rectify it. In Nigeria, they make this whole elaborate scheme where you have to go, like, round and round in circles. Like, it took me five days to sort out an issue that really takes 30 minutes at most to sort out. Like, realistically, it's a 10 minute issue, but they dragged it on for five days. It's ridiculous, but it's, it's actually, unfortunately, a very, very common, like, theme. Like, as you go through life in Nigeria, you'll just find that you're frustrated very easily because of things like that. And, hey, if, if, if you think that's great and that's fine and that's just how the country is, that's okay, that's fine, but, it can be so much better, like not be not having to wear a coat, just being able to wear whatever you want as you go along. I love it, love it. Like I love the weather, I love the food. Like I was making fresh oranges every morning. Nigeria is great, it's fantastic, but
there would be a lie to insinuate that it's perfect and nothing can be like I don't know anyway that being said will I go back for NYC I want to I think I would be more inclined to if I knew I was going with people that were in the same shoes as me um so the call call to action if anybody wants to go for nyc next year next year september i think it starts from september you can basically you can start in september you can start in october you can start in november and you can start in december i think that's four four different intakes if anybody wants to go together from um london and go to nigeria i know you're, you're, you're like why why would anybody want to do that <laughs> But if anybody wants to go, let's actually go. Let's go together. We can all get in. That sounds like a like a recipe for disaster. But if we're all good people, we can actually make it work. And we'll have friends that came from the same place. So if you're in the diaspora and you want to go and experience life in Nigeria, you want to move there, see the... And there's actually so many opportunities, which I'll talk about in a second. If you want to see the opportunities that are there, let's go. Let's pack our loads and go for a year and do NYSC. And you'll have stories to tell, I promise you. You will have stories to tell. <laughs> that being said, now that I'm back, I'm trying to think what do I want to do with my life, <laughs> really. What do I want to do? Where do I want to go from here? And one of the things that I'm actually doing that stemmed from being in Nigeria, if you watched my Whisper Challenge video um, with one of my best friends, Ore, then her, me and her both have started a company called the Black Label Company. You know, I've heard me plug it once or twice in a video. And basically, we work with traders over there who make things like this so and carrot print accessories and carrot print bags clutches waist beads anklets back like just things like that so it's called the black label company and it's kind of just redefining um african fashion and just looking at it from a different perspective so i love ankara as you can see i love ankara print um and i love that we I, I really love that it can be more versatile it doesn't have to be that you sew iran buba or you wear the typical traditional african wear you can still wear african um designs african prints support african businesses but in a modern and stylish way and that's kind of the idea behind the black label company so obviously each earring is like unique it's one of a kind so yeah that's kind of one part of what I'm doing right now, I'm pushing the black label company and discovering how hard <laughs> it is to start a business because you have an idea and you're like, wow, this idea is fantastic, it's going to blow. And then you actually get it running in motion and you're like, wow, okay, this idea is hard. <laughs> like running a business is hard and I'm really, really learning to not be discouraged, to be patient, to be patient to trust God and just be like, okay, in time, everything will work. But if you are someone who has started a business um, or who does things like this, like you sell jewelry, accessories, makeup, and you have any tips for me and, and Aurea, please do comment down below or um, hit me up. I'd be so grateful for your help. But yes, also if you are in the UK, if you live in the UK, please check out our, our Instagram, the underscore black underscore label company. Um, get yourself a nice piece. We also have a, an eBay account, the black label company. Or if you just type in Ankara print anything, some of our items should come up. So yeah, if you want to support your girl, I would appreciate. Um, there's that. And also I started teaching, teaching yoga le lessons more full time. So since I've been back in London, that's kind of what I've been doing for the most part. I've been teaching yoga lessons one-on-one. -on -one. Um, in terms of law and what I want to do with that, I don't know. I don't know if I want to practice here. One thing I think I definitely will do is that if you are qualified in another country, such as Nigeria, because you can do an exam called the QLETs, I believe, and that will qualify you here. Well, it's two exams, one multiple choice and one practical exam and that will qualify you as a solicitor in the UK you won't have to do the LPC you won't have to go get a training contract to just become a qualified solicitor so I'm considering doing that as well and it's very reasonably priced compared to like doing a year of the LPC um, but there's a lot for me to think about in terms of what I want to do next I want to go back into a corporate job there's a lot there's just a lot but um, please pray for me <laughs> Um, please hit me up. You can message me. We can talk. Let me know. Like I said before, let me know down below what you want to see from um, this channel. Guys, thank you so much. I can't appreciate you enough for just giving giving me a platform. Especially there are some of you that 
always comment on my i'm gonna put some of you on the screen I'm just gonna write your name because like i always see you i always see your comment and there's more of you than this i promise like there's there's so many people that i drop a video and they comment like they just come straight they comment i always see your name like always like you're imprinted in my mind and i'm so grateful so yeah feel free to check out the black label company on instagram if you want to follow my personal account it's coco underscore infusion if you want to follow my yoruba account is yoruba underscore lessons and subscribe like share what to know whatever you want to do really <laughs> i'll see you guys in my next video see you guys